Okay, I want to highlight something that's new to Mark Edit as of the <clears throat> last release sometime in early January. Um, one of the questions that comes up often um, from folks who've been using the program for a while um, has been a desire to get more information about what's actually happening under the hood. Um, so if you are familiar with Mark Edit's uh, task manager, uh, you will know that Mark Edit provides a, a small report when a task is run. Um, that will tell you uh, approximately what kind of actions were finished. So here we say that there tells us modifications that were made for the particular results. Well, that's um, been the approach that I've taken for quite a long time. Um, the questions that I've been having come up though is folks have been interested in seeing at the at a lower level um, what are the actual modifications that have been made. Um, this is kind of tricky because in the Mark Eddy universe the components that make up the application uh, actually don't talk to each other. Um, they're individual essentially uh, for lack of a better term microservices although not quite the same structure that do um, specific things and because of that they they really don't know anything about um, how any of the other components work together. So for example the components that actually edit the um, records in the Mark editor don't really understand Mark or anything like that. All the data um, is handled internally in, in, a, in a file format that Mark Edit uses to optimize editing. Um, just like that, those editing processes have no idea what Mark is or a flavor of XML or anything like that. I keep them separated on purpose. Uh, so it makes it really difficult to be able to capture information about what's actually going on. So um, this has come up a few times and so I partially to maybe help me with debugging a little bit too, um, I went ahead and started thinking about how to add an event handler into the application so that as events happen, they bubble up through um, the application so that the uh, service module that handles all the interactions between the application GUI and the libraries underneath could capture the messaging that's going on um, between the various components and, and log those events. Right now, logging happens only within the Mark editor, basically. Um, logging does also happen um, within the uh, uh, linked data tools. Um, but you have to turn the log on. It's not turned on by default. Uh, the way you turn it on is we go to the preferences. And inside the Mark editor window, down on the bottom, and mine are turned on right now, you'll find a new option that says enable logging. And when you check that, um, it will enable this path, which is a path to the configuration file where the logs are gonna be stored. Um, so when you go ahead and do that, uh, click OK. Um, I've already got it set, so I'm just gonna close it. And you're now logging. So as soon as you, next time you open Mar the Mark Editor, um, a log will set up. Uh, a couple things about this. If you set this, if you change this setting from within the Mark Editor, going to preferences and setting it from here, uh, this session um, and turn logging on from, from right here, when you say OK and close the window, this session won't be logged. Um, sessions, log sessions are initiated when the Mark Editor window opens. So if you turn it on while you're in the Mark Editor, you will need to close the window and reopen it. Um, and that will initiate a session. Um, once sessions are there, um, you have a couple different ways to work with them. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and look at those. So by default, you can find your logging sessions. Um, the path name by default is in the applications directory. Um, if you go into configs, you will find um, logs. And so here are all our log settings. So mark edit by default um, will not delete any of the logs. It will only delete them um, once a uh, session has been um, completed 
and um, no changes have taken place. Uh, if changes have taken place and logs happen, then it won't delete the files. Um, there are a couple other places where logs won't be deleted. However, the program does, every time it's open, evaluate the log file and removes any logs that are over two weeks um, in length. So you don't actually have to manage this directory. You can. You can go ahead and delete all the log files if you want. Um, and there is a tool um, in the application now. Um, uh, it's in... Uh, Help. Uh, let me try and remember where I put it. Uh, here we go. Log management under add-ins. Um, you can delete log files. This will delete all of the logs that aren't in use. So if I go back and I look at my log files now, see that they're deleted because I didn't have any that were in use. Any of these sessions that are currently open won't be deleted. Um, so if you run that and you happen to have a log file in session, it won't delete that file. Um, so let me show you what I mean by um, logs, how it logs. So I'll go ahead and open up a Mark Editor. If I go back to my log file, my log folder, you will see that a session has been created. This is the session. Um, if I close my log folder, you'll see the sessions removed. I did no actions, so the log file is removed. However, if I had done an action, the log file won't be removed, and then it'll be managed through um, the normal um, uh, uh, date management of the log file. Um, so let's go ahead and see what happens when you do log data. So um, we'll go ahead and open that file up again. So I have a log file running now. Uh, if I rerun that task, we get back our results here. You'll see a couple things that, one thing that's changed, you'll see a link here um, that's added. If you have a log file, um, this button shows up and you can click on this button and it should load the log file, although it didn't load a log file there. So let's go back and look here. Uh, reports, manage log files, view the current log file. There we go. So for some odd reason, it didn't load that log file. Um, I have some problems sometimes where files get locked and don't reopen. So I'm guessing that's probably what happened there. I'll take a look at it. So here we have, you can look at the log file. Um, tasks are noted in the log file. So you'll see that it notes when a task starts. Um, you'll see that it tells you what it did. So in this case, it did a swap file and this is um, the data that uh, was uh, generated. Um, when it runs a task where it's a replacement task, it'll tell you what the original data was and what the output is. So there is a, a value here that's tabbed. So you'll see this is the, the record number, the action that occurred, if there's original data stored, and then the output, the final output. The reason why in a swap field function it doesn't keep the original data is because the original data could be from a variety of different fields. Swap fields could be pulling together lots of data. It's not really a one-to-one -one match. I tend to only in providing original data when the data elements are kind of one-to-one -one matches. But this is certainly up to debate if there's a, if if having information from what the original data looked like when it was pulled um, and not just the output, then that can certainly be adjusted. Um, so here we can see um, when the task is finished, we get an end task. And the reason why those are there are actually important. When you go here and you do a special undo, um, you can undo your swap tasks. And if you go back and you look at the log, you will see that a special undo has been run. And what this does is this helps mark edit. So there are other functions that can be used with the um, log file. So this is the data that the log file captures by default. And this number here is the record number in the file, that 24. It's the number um, of the record that it shows up in the file. Um, some folks wanted to be able to enhance the logs. So we have options to do advanced log management. So you can enha enhance the logs and say, I'd like to include these fields with it. We can also um, extract records that have been changed as part of um, the, the record set. And if you extract the records, the program is going to keep track of when special undos happen so that it doesn't take into account 
records changed and then undone. So that way it only keeps records that have been changed. That's why there are markers in there that will tell you when tasks start, when they finish, when subtasks start, when subtasks finish, when undos happen. That way within the log file you have a complete transaction record of everything that occurred during that session, including when things were undone, but if you were to extract the changed records, the tool would only extract the records that were changed and take into account when things were undone as part of that process. You can also see your other management tools. So we can view the log file. We've looked at that. Um, we can also um, delete the log files and view all the log files, which takes you to um, the thing. Log files are just text files. You can open it up, you can see the text file. Um, you can load this into Excel as a, a tab delimited format if you prefer to look at it in that format. Go ahead and close that. So that gives you um, a little bit of a preview. So what gets logged in a log file? So anything that you can run um, a task against. So if we go to manage tasks and we look at what can be done in a task. We look at what's in the drop down list here. Um, the log file captures replacements, new fields, delete fields, edit fields, subfield edits, indicators, swap fields, copies. It will track when other task lists are run inside of the application and log all the underlying operations there. It will log operations that happen within the RDA helper, kind of. Mostly it's logging the RDA helper ran. Um, I will look a little closer to see if I can log the individual underlying operations that happen, but at this point I haven't. Um, it will log all of the elements that are changed as part of the link data build. Um, for a linked data task, it will log um, building new fields and it logs the edit shortcuts. So if you change cases, if you um, remove blank lines, um, any of those elements will be logged as well. Um, so the tool does a, a fair bit of logging within the Mark Editor, and that is where logging is only taking place, is from within this screen, within the Mark Editor. Um, eventually, I'd like to be able to provide a way um, for folks who run plugins, because there's a handful of plugins that have been created in MarkEdit, um, where they could actually tap into the same logging um, API. And so that as changes are made in a plugin, they could log those sessions as well. Um, but I haven't actually worked through how that would work yet. Uh, this works within the Windows, Linux, and the Mac versions. Um, you'll find those options for setting the, the log preferences um, in the preference settings in each of these places. Um, and like I said, this is a new operation. So the, as you're working with it, you may find um, that there are a few um, uh, places where the gremlins still get into the, uh, the works. But if you find them, let me know, and I'll be working through them. Um, because I, I, I actually find have found since this has been in place um, actually uh, two occasions working with folks who had problems working with their data where um, having the logging uh, actually came in handy and so it would be nice to um, uh, I've actually thought about um, expanding where some of the log uh, operations happen so anyways that's logging if you have any questions um, let me know